Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder, and I am here in the Chapayev, and this is probably one hour after the enduring confrontation in Ship RB English Channel scenario actually began. Overall, this one battle that I played took me two hours, and at the end you will see the rewards, the results of the battle, and they are quite excessively. But please take into account that I have a premium account, and that I'm spawning here in one of the top dogs, or respawning rather. Now, in uh, today I have chosen the Soviets, because this is realistic battle, and I figured that uh, we have this spawn point system, right? Which I'm not the greatest fan of. However, I figured out if I would uh, spawn in one of the Soviet destroyers with 130mm high velocity guns, I might have a slight advantage over the enemy. I didn't expect the weather effects though with this hazy rain etc where you barely can make out the enemy uh, only if you are more or less zoomed out and then it's again uh, clicking around to find the gray boxing or the marking of the enemy ship and then uh, just farm it and I'm pretty experienced with giving lead with uh, adjusting for the fall of shot which you barely can make out etc but still it was very easy for me to farm. So, at the beginning, I just uh, shot up some enemy destroyers. After I trolled for like 15 minutes without doing anything, because you have to cross the English Channel. And that is quite a distance. In fact, the reading from our middle spawn to the left spawn initially was over 40 kilometers. Oof. And uh, Leningrad, the destroyer leader that I initially took out because it's premium and, uh, you know, it has five of those guns, uh, despite the terrible firing angles and slow turret rotation speed, uh, it goes 80 kilometers per hour. And even that would have taken me half an hour to get there in just sailing in a straight line. However, at the end, I killed like five enemy ships and then I went into the Chapayev. And the Chapayev is really really good at shooting up enemies at long range but as you can see you can see nothing again the battle took over two or more or less exactly two hours and to just uh, pick out the highlights um, and then just um, for you to give an impression what's going on is difficult so now let's have a look at the minimap and as you can see i'm closing in towards the middle spawn zone slash middle objective of the enemy so what i'm doing here is going directly for the objective while at the same time shooting up enemy ships just as they spawn so uh, i'm not a fan of this overlay of spawn and uh, objective i really not am a fan of this but um, i still wanted to try it out and well Aside from it getting boring at times where you can tap out for 10 minutes just uh, sending your ship in a straight line somewhere, not really that much happened. One more thing though is once you get a foothold on the enemy's coast, you have a much easier time and uh, shorter travel distance as well as less downtime when you get killed eventually to get back into the fight and uh, threaten the next enemy capture zone. So um, this is quite uh, alarming if you think about it. Once one side has an, uh, an advantage, it's very, very hard in theory and I imagine also in practice for the enemy team that is at a disadvantage to get back. So it's like an avalanche effect. Um, aside from the weather effects, which I think I like for a change, but it kind of was... Um, I mean, it gave it a little bit of immersion. I liked the idea of weather effects, but it didn't really affect the combat too much because of the aiming system. I barely can make out the enemies, but again, I can shoot them up because I'm used to this uh, aiming system. The next thing is, if you look at... Uh, both uh, islands or the continent and then also the island in the north there are bombing points for planes and there are also and they are also targets for the AI uh, bomber squadrons which bomb those things if they get through but uh, if you are in an anti-aircraft ship you know proximity fuse heavy anti-aircraft you shoot down the bombers as they come by 
So that is some AI events and I'm also a fan of this to bring life to this vast emptiness or blue desert. Because very often it takes a while for you to get in gunning range. Even in the Chapayev that has an effective range of up to 12 kilometers. Because I cannot really watch the fall of shot as effectively as in good weather conditions. I still need to go close to like 8 kilometers to bring in effective fire. So, so far so good. Now, last week we had the test in Arcade and I think that the feeling is different. Aside from the aiming system, again, thanks to the persons that pointed out that you could in theory switch to the RB aiming mode in Arcade, which uh, once it is time again to test um, Arcade, I will definitely have a look at it if I can activate it, etc. But for the moment I'm okay with Realistic. A nice side effect is that there was barely any torpedoes in the water, in contrast to our arcade where people were sitting back in the spawn uh, with their long lances just uh, yeah, poisoning the entire water with uh, metal fish. So the next thing is those bombing targets. The question is, can you jump into a bomber, bomb them and give your team a massive advantage? Are they really a, are they really a winning condition? Do they contribute to the victory? I couldn't really test that. Um, I didn't have a plane in my lineup and even then, you know, for me that's ship RB. Personal opinion, um, I hope you understand. So no top spam, I cannot see the enemy. I don't know if in other battles you had clear sight, but um, maybe Gaijin tested many things at once again. So what is there to improve? Well, first of all, um, there might be some side objectives in the middle of the map so that it is some action early on and then you can jump into bigger ships and then have hopefully, um, you know, a bit more impact on the overall outcome of the game. Then the next is maybe what I really was a fan of was this short shore bombardment things when you attacked an enemy harbor that there should be... Um, pillboxes and, and gunning platforms, you know, bunkers with huge naval guns where you have to gun them down once they target you, that would be really, really cool. Obviously, it needs to be more or less a fair fight and so that you can actually target them effectively. Again, half an hour later, where I jumped into another Chapayev because I ran, into, I ran out of uh, ammunition, then I captured the left spawn, then I bailed out, uh, jumped into another Chapayev because I acquired so many spawn points. As you could see, I had over 3000, so I could do this three times more, and this is where I already had done it two times. Yes, I know I farmed a lot of bots, I farmed a lot of uh, players in Destroyers, it's not so much fun for them, but again, uh, I was pretty lucky, not just with this uh, first salvo shot uh, ammo rack detonation but this was my 30th kill 30 kills 12 uh, AI planes and uh, also quite a few assists I know that the Chapayev is really good with the semi armor piercing and uh, I just did all the uh, stats and spreadsheets for it for uh, hopefully upcoming review and uh, the semi armor piercing is really dirty it's really dirty so again, a short bombardment missions, I would really love to see them. Then uh, capturing an enemy capital unit, maybe a disabled aircraft carrier or uh, maybe even, you know, an, an abandoned uh, ship or something that is sinking where you have to capture the area around it to obtain some secret documents. Maybe this is something Gaijin could go into. Um, we need more AI events, for example, a convoy at the coastline that you need to protect that uh, refills then maybe even your uh, your score points, your victory points, whatever you want to call them. So this is another idea. Here though, we had once the situations where we had all the capture zones and then uh, we didn't win. But now we are capturing all the capture zones or the last of them once more. And uh, finally, this is the winning condition. So it was not quite clear what the winning conditions actually were. But look at that 
uh, overall list of awards and achievements, let's now have a look at the results because they are really, really interesting. But please keep in mind, this is winning an enduring conflict battle that took two hours with a premium account in one of the top cruisers. 236,000 civil lines, but 77,200 vehicle research points. That is awesome. That is amazing. And on top of this, an Avenger order. So this is a big chunk ripped out of the research. If you put it down, it's like uh, um, it's more like 40,000 per hour or 20,000 every single uh, every 30 minutes. That's not bad. It could be better. Um, but again, that's for the winning team. So don't expect those results all too often. Still, I kind of had a bit of a feeling of immersion. Uh, maybe a bit more players, you know, 64 versus 64. Huh? Gotcha. Huh? 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 Big battles. I know you can do it. And uh, I know that the map design is not that easy, but because, you know, a blue desert, open ocean is historically accurate. But it's for the gameplay it's it's debatable um, it gets boring a little bit at times where there is nothing for you to shoot where you just have to get with your ship to the combat distance and that takes like 10 minutes 15 minutes you tap out you watch a youtube video or two and uh, you know do some social media things then you tap in and you still have nothing to shoot so that is something that has to be worked on otherwise i really like the idea it is just fine tuning that gaijin has to do at the end of the day that's it for me today i hope you had uh, fun watching this video and uh, if you have some additional ideas what could be done about this game mode with uh, another objectives events etc let me know in the comment section and as usual thanks for watching thanks for listening please give this video a like if it did subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields in the skies and on the waves of war thunder